Words at War. Citizens of Athens, attention! You will receive into your homes such of our officers as may be billeted upon you. You will put yourselves and your possessions at their disposal. You will obey their commands without question and treat them in all respects as your honored guests. Any attempt at insubordination will be met with imprisonment or death by order of the Führer. The National Broadcasting Company, in cooperation with the Council on Books in Wartime, presents another of the most significant programs on the air today, Words at War, dramatizing the most representative books to come out of this world conflict. Tonight, Glenway Westcott's absorbing novel of the German character, Apartment in Athens. You mean to actually invite a German officer to come and live with us? It's a good policy, dear. Is it possible for a Helianus to suggest such a thing? But that's all the more reason, Zoe. The name Helianus is suspect already. But Petrus and old Georgus will believe you've gone over to the enemy. Perhaps they're sterner stuff than I am. Or perhaps they don't love their wives and children as much as I do. Nicholas, our own little Alex has the spirit, too, and he's only 12. Well? Your cousins will have nothing but contempt for you. So will Alex when he's older. They needn't know. This proclamation today forces any Greek family to take in German officers. If we're forced to it, yes. But if you make a friendly gesture toward the enemy, everyone will know it and we'll be in disgrace with our own people. Nicholas, I'd be so ashamed inviting one of these Nazi brutes into our home. My dear, I know how you hate the Germans. I'm not exactly fond of them myself. But they're human, too. Oh. They need food and lodging. Why, Zoe, we could get 40 marks for the front room. 40 marks of inflation money, perhaps enough for a loaf of bread. But, dear, don't you realize that our problem is one of sheer survival for the duration? No. We've used up all our resources. I have a wife and two children. What kind of a husband and father would I be if I didn't try by every possible means to see that you do survive? But not at the cost of aiding the enemy, Nicholas. Ah, Nonsense. We'll serve Greece best by keeping alive until she's free. Nicholas. Now you take the quartermaster corps in the next street. Those officers are an entirely different type, Zoe. They're businessmen, work long hours. Much better to choose one of them while we can than have one of the other type inflicted on us. You heard the proclamation. You know what's going to happen. You always make things sound so reasonable here. <laughs> well, dear, you're a woman. You think with your emotions. A man has to keep a clear head. Oh, there's Alex exciting Vida again with those blood-curdling torture stories. <laughs> Don't you worry. They're like fairy tales to me. Well, come and quiet them, Nicholas. Uh, Alex is going to be rather a problem, I'm afraid. Children? Children! Mother, watch. We're playing a game. Oh. Here, put that cushion on the chair, lady. This one? The soft, squashy one. I'll get Father's walking stick. And why do you want my walking stick, Alex? It's a bayonet, and the cushion is a German stomach. Mm. What talk is this from our son? Poor child, he's playing at war. Twelve and already he knows so much. I'm practicing, Mother. He's practicing. Alex is practicing. Alex, Lida, war isn't for children. Uh, you must think of it as, as a flood or an earthquake. I am a Greek, Mother. You'll be proud when I kill my first German. Nicholas, make Alex understand how dangerous this is. He's always dreaming and planning. Soon he'll try to make it come true and the Germans will catch him and then... Oh, heaven, haven't we suffered enough. Children? Yes, Daddy. You may uh, look at my big travel book on the top bookcase shelf. Oh, Daddy! Be careful of it, though. Oh, thank, thank you, Father. Daddy. Let me get it. Okay. Oh, it's my turn to I want to get it first. Poor little thing, so thin and white. Malnutrition, of course. And the famine's getting worse. Mm. The quartermaster corps controls all the food in Athens, Zoe. They're sure to have special privileges. Perhaps if one of their officers lives here, if we treat him well, he might even but give if us... If I could only get food for Alex and Lida. Well, I'm going to see what can be done. Nicholas Celianos, 45, former publisher of school books and scholarly treatises. Once prosperous and owned a state at Sihoko. Wife Zoe, 43, two children, Alex, 12, lead at 7. Celianos himself has never taken part in active resistance, but 
Aha. His cousins, Petros and Georgis Elianos, are rebels fighting in the mountains. Anyone named Elianos is suspect. Hmm. The rest is confidential. Not a good record. If I may suggest, there is nothing against me personally. That may be only because you have not been found out. We know that you Greeks stick together. Hmm. However, there may be a certain advantage to the new order. If I were a member of your household, I would have you under my eye. We are quiet, retiring people, sir. Struggling to survive under the present difficulties. We take part in no subversive activities. That remains to be seen. I will inspect your apartment this afternoon. No, no, this single bed won't do. I need my rest. My wife and I sleep on our only double bed, sir. No argument. A good German knows how to sleep on the ground. Won't hurt a Greek to sleep on the floor. Move the double bed in here. Elianos, come here, get this brat out of the bathroom. And hereafter, this to be for my exclusive use. I shall dine here alone. No one else in this house is to eat until I have eaten. Here are two dozen shirts, Mrs. Silianos. Wash and iron them perfectly. Or you will do them over again. Nicholas, how outrageous. Oh, now, dear, don't take it seriously. It's just the German love of order. How can we sleep in the kitchen? Why must this captain have the sitting room as well as the bedroom? He studies at night. And you know his eating alone is quite an advantage to us. He'll never notice how much we get of his food allotment. You're such a clever cook, dear. I can't stand it if he orders me about the kitchen. Let's not anticipate the worst. If we're tactful and do our best for him, he'll appreciate it. How can you be so soft? Nicholas, you're a Greek gentleman, and this Nazi bully treats you like a servant. Zoe, you're too overwrought. Please trust me. I shall wear him down with courtesy. <laughs> Zoe, darling. Help! Zoe. Oh, Nicholas. I'm here, darling. Right beside you. Shall I turn on the light? No. Let's lie here in the blessed darkness. I'm worried about these nightmares of yours. They're no worse than the nightmare we live by day. Darling, I'll talk you to sleep again. We've had such delightful times in our lives. These memories should sustain us now that things are difficult. I remember once when you and I were walking in the Royal Gardens, just before we were married. How beautiful you were. The Greek statue come to life. Nicholas, why did you even consider sharing our privacy with this Nazi officer? And then there was another time when we wandered among the ruins of the Parthenon. I remarked, and I thought it rather good, too that even the fragments of the classic age of Greece have a character and a quality we admire, but cannot equal today. All of these Nazis are beasts, all of them. Greece is a volume of history, and every stone is a page for the sensitive to read. Our very name has a poetical significance to other nations. Nicholas, it's no use. Don't try. So the old charm doesn't work anymore. Now inspect your icebox, Mrs. Ilyan. Hmm. I think the three onions, half a cup of olive oil, a cup of curd. Hey! Did you try to hide this piece of cheese in the corner? No, sir. Put it on a plate in my room. Where's the bread? There is no bread, Captain Calder. When any food enters this house for myself or for you, I want it reported to me. For the next two hours, I want absolute silence. There's your quartermaster, Nicholas. Well, dear, quartermasters are bookkeepers, too. They like to check up on things. It's their habit of mind. We were going to live on the leftovers. There aren't any. He knows exactly what goes into every dish, and I must account for every ounce. He's turned the table on us. We even have to account for our own food. Careful, dear. Dusting his desk. Don't disarrange the papers. Oh, Knocked over these photographs. So, are they damaged? The glass broken? No, thank heaven. 
Was that his wife? Must be. And these boys in uniform, his sons. At least I know he's human. I've seen him studying them. It isn't German. It isn't Greek. It's a man looking at someone he loves. Elianos, come in. Uh, on your knees. Captain, I... Oh, no, no, no. I'm not going to kick you. Pull off my boots. Oh, yes. <clears throat> Better. See that you get a high polish on them. And I want them standing outside my door in the morning. Is that understood? He didn't leave a lick of soup. Has he started on the chops yet, Father? There were three big ones. Surely he won't eat them all. Take him in this glass of wine, Alex. But just look. Don't say anything. Yes, Father. No, no, Lita. There's just enough for Captain Calder. I'm so hungry. You see, Nicholas, the child's ravenous and that brute in there gorging him. Hush, hush. The child might repeat what you said. She's too frightened even to speak to me. Father, he's just eating the inside of the chops. There's a lot left around the bones. He, he's lighting a cigar. I'll go and bring back his plate. Well? Uh, here's an ice tray, sir. Uh, let me remove your plate. Don't bother. I'll use the plate for an ashtray. Nicholas, I can't stand it. So it is dangerous to cross a German officer. That brute has killed our son. If you don't go in, I will. I'm going. Captain Order that brat of yours to get up unless you want me to kick his brains out. Alex, Alex, here. Here, I'll help you, son. He knows the weight of my fist. Don't you, you sniveling little thief? Yes, sir. What has he done to displease you, Captain? Last night I sent this little rat over to my friend with the two meat bones left over from my dinner. His dog enjoys these little delicacies. Only one bone arrived. The boy stole the other. I didn't. I swear I didn't. I wanted to, but I was afraid to. He lies again. Uh, uh, Go to your room, Alex. <laughs> Please accept my apologies, Captain. My... Son is a growing boy and suffers from his appetite. If he's trusted with food, he'll steal it. He just can't help it. Uh, after this, please let me carry it to your friend's dog myself. You Greeks are all thieves by nature. Only you happen to be intelligent enough to know you can't get away with it. I want this bread and cheese and take it to my friend with my compliments. Yes, sir, immediately. Alex is a nervous, cowardly boy. Corporal punishment's the only thing for him. I expect to see a marked improvement as a result of my living with you. You'll thank me for the trouble I take with him. Yes, sir, if you'll excuse me now, sir. How much longer? How can you stand this humiliation? Be patient, dear, be patient. It's better to be alive. No decent man should stand it. I will stand anything for you and the children. This was hard on Alex tonight, but it's no worse than the beatings plenty of boys have endured from their schoolmasters. Look at that boy's ribs sticking out. Look at his thin, starved face and remember it when you're bowing and scraping to that devil in there. We're better off than people in prisons and concentration camps. How? The captain is our protector from the greater cruelties. As long as we serve him, we're safe. <laughs> Right, too. Oh, Nicholas, just think, two wonderful weeks. Yes, my dears, the captain's off. Now watch the car turn the corner. He'll be on the plane for Germany in 20 minutes. Maybe the English will shoot the plane down and then he'll never oh, come back. Well, you better not get on that. <laughs> if he comes back, if he does, I'll get him out on the balcony and I'll trip him and he'll fall over the balustrade and hit the street squash. <laughs> right. I still can't believe he's gone. Yeah, freedom takes a little time to get used to, dear. We'll eat all the captain's food. We won't have his allotment while he's away, dear. And never you mind. A clever family like the Helianus knows how to have a good time somehow. Oh, Nicholas, will we ever be happy again? It's never too late for a little happiness. Did you have a comfortable trip, Captain Coulter? Yes, yes. Uh, by the way, I'm Major Coulter now. Oh, I, I beg your pardon, Major. No matter. Will um, one of our Greek stews suit you for dinner, Major? Uh, I have many appetites. 
You behave it yourselves. What? Don't go to any trouble for me. But you are... Yes, I was always particular about food and such, but uh, perhaps I'm different now. I, uh, I, I put up fresh curtains in your bedroom, sir. Very kind of you, Mrs. Elianos. We'd like to please you, sir. If there's anything we can do... Nothing. Nothing matters now. <laughs> you poor devils, I'm sorry for you, too. I'll be back late, but I'll try not to disturb you. The trap, that's what it is, a trap. Oh, come now, dear. When he was back in Germany, he remembered all we'd done for him and decided to be pleasant. Fortunately for us, he's a changed man. Changed? He's a German. Shall I uh, remove your boots, sir? No. No, 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 no. Sit down instead. Well, where's Have a little talk. Two men living under the same roof should discuss things occasionally. Take that chair, Yana. If you, if you wish, sir. <coughs> Thank you. You're a man of some distinction. A publisher, weren't you? Yes, sir, I was a publisher. In, in a small way. I've noticed your books. They have unusual quality. <laughs> we Germans admire culture in any country. Uh, may I pour you a little brandy? Well, very kind of you, Major Clark. Talks more easily with brandy. You are? Well, thank you, sir. Your uh, health, Major Gulter. And yours, Elianos. <laughs> You're a sensible fellow. Oh, Greek. Tonight, I'm making my will. Oh? That is, remaking it. I have property, and in time of war, it's hard to handle such things. Yes, there must be many new laws. Well, you're a very well-informed man, Elianos. In the publishing business, we pick up a good many odds and ends of information, sir. You see, I have no family. I didn't know. No family. It may interest you to know how I am disposing of my modest fortune. You foreigners think of us Germans only as soldiers and world leaders. You forget what we have done for civilization, philosophy, science, music. Yes, indeed, sir. Germany has made a great contribution to the arts and sciences. Music is what I love best. If things were to go badly the next year, next few years, and our German musicians suffered hardship, it would be the end of music all over the world. Dead silence everywhere. Am I not right? Certainly the world would be poorer without German music. Huh. It is the only music. Therefore, my estate goes to a music school in Leipzig for scholarships and a pension fund. Now, if you'll excuse me. Oh, well, certainly, sir. And uh, thank you for the brandy. Oh. Nicholas, you were gone so long. Is anything wrong? There's something I don't understand. What? He's just made a new will. Well, what's peculiar about that? Why, the pictures in his room. His family. <laughs> All Germans are vindictive. He's changed his mind. They've offended him. Zoe, he's not a cruel man now. He's a sad man. You think so? Here's a glass of our hot-spiced wine, Major. I thought you might enjoy it. No, nah, not very much. Tastes of pitch. Nevertheless, thank you. Sit down. Well, thank you, sir. I've just been reading an article by one of our great writers who explains with a wonderful German frankness that German defeat would be really German victory. Well, how is that possible, sir? It would intensify the spirit of the nation and increase the national aptitude for war. A very interesting argument. Absolutely conclusive, like all of our German thinking. You see, we are so intelligent, we consider the most remote possibility, such as losing this present war. That surprises you, doesn't it? Well, I confess it does. Mm -hmm. We're the only nation to think in great terms. That is why we will govern the world. Who else is equal to the task? If I may suggest, sir, the huh? Americans are able and wonderfully inventive, sir. Ha! Ah. We have taken all their inventions and we have made something of them. Ah, what fools the Americans are. They are so generous and free and easy between wars. America has been most generous to us Greeks. Fools and their money. Why, in peacetime, they helped Germany. 
It's not sentiment. They think it is to their interest to do so. You see how weak you other nations are in your intellect? The Americans help us to prepare for the next war against them. Must there be another war, Major? Ah. War is the only way of life. Peace is a weak thing. Germany wants victory in due time, of course, but... If this is not the time, we will have the future. There will always be another war, Ilianus. Forever and forever history will give the Germans another chance. I hope you've learned something of our ideals from this talk. I found it most stimulating, Major. I'm a very lonely man these days. We Germans have great hearts and the capacity for suffering. If there's anything we can do to make you more comfortable, sir. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Don't put yourself out. It isn't necessary. Good night. <clears throat> Good night, Major Colton. Nicholas, you know I'm always nervous when you let the Major draw you into conversation. My dear, I'm becoming his friend. It's a great step ahead. Why, he hasn't inspected the kitchen or checked on the food for two weeks. We're eating better, Zoe. These Germans are very clever, Nicholas. They invite your confidences by pretending to give theirs. It's only pretending, darling. This was real, I'm sure. Oh. Something's troubling him. There were tears in his eyes tonight. He's a very lonely man, Zoe. Nicholas, you're more of a child than Alex and Lida. <laughs> Alex plays at war and I play at being a philosopher superior to war, is that it? You're always ready to believe the best of everyone, dear. Never trust a German. My no, sweet, stubborn wife. You don't think I always agree with the major, do you? No, I don't think that, but... Well? It's only that you're so absent-minded, dear. Sometime you won't think and you'll say the wrong thing. Oh, I'm very careful, very discreet. And kindness always pays. Never with a Nazi. Gesture counts, anyway. I think I'll take him in this cup of coffee for a nightcap. He seems so melancholy. Nicholas, please don't talk anymore. Oh, I promise. I'll just hand in the cup. God's name, why must you come in here just now? I'm alone. I need to be alone. Oh, forgive me, Major. Ah, it's too late now. It's too late to stand on ceremony. Shut the door. Yes, sir. I feel very bad. I've talked I... too much already. Why did I take you into my confidence? What possessed me? Oh, I'd better go back to the kitchen, sir. Or if you're ill, may I call a physician? If I can do something for you, no, sir. No, I... it makes no difference. You're a good fellow, Elianus, aren't you? Perhaps you're not. I don't know. I can't judge. A German officer loses confidence in his judgment of other men. It's the end of everything, isn't it? Sit down, Elianus. Thank you. But if I can That's help... good to tell my trouble. It passes the time. The deadly time. <laughs> you Greeks and the other... Foreign nations. That's your blasted conceit. You think all the suffering of war is on your side. It's not so. I told you I had to make a new will. This is what happened. Just before I returned home to Germany, my elder son, who was a fighter pilot, crashed. Oh, what a tragedy, sir. Almost every family has to give a son for the fatherland. But while I was on my way home, my house in Königsberg was destroyed in an air raid. My wife was... Burned horribly. And you've suffered all of this in silence, sir. And after I got home, my younger son was killed in Russia. A young boy, green soldier. Your entire family. For three days, my wife and her frightful bandages comforted me for the death of our sons. She restored my faith in the future. In Germany. Three Wonderful day. <laughs> then she died. Sir. Word. Words cannot express. I, I cannot say. You're a family man yourself. I knew you'd understand. I do. I do. I'm so weary of this war. I, I can't fight anymore. I'm in hell. Oh. Hell, hell on earth. Oh, how intolerable it is to think that two men with too much power should have brought all this tragedy upon us other men. Two men? What do you mean, what two men? I mean the Fuhrer and the Ducci. What? Why, you vile <laughs> Greek, how dare you? How dare you say you want to get the mirror? 
so grieved over your sorrow. How can a filthy swine like you know my sorrow? I overstepped, sir. You I... poor rascally <laughs> Greek. And I thought you were more intelligent than the others. You know what comes next, I presume. I now telephone the military police to come here and take you in custody. You unfortunate woman, you. Your husband's under arrest. Go away. Ah, uh, here. Nicholas Hillianus, since you are to die in the morning, you are permitted two minutes private talk with your family. I will wait at 30 paces. My darling. Nicholas. Zoe, we have only a moment. It belongs to Alex. Alex, my son. Yes, father. Your mother has been right all along. And I've been wrong, terribly wrong. I'm paying for my cowardice. No, no, you'll die a hero, Nicholas. Your father leaves you a name to be proud of, Alex. It's no matter. Alex, tonight I want you to steal out of the house and make your way to the mountains. You know where our cousins, Petrus and Georgis are. Father, I would anyway tomorrow. No, tonight. They'll think you wouldn't leave me. Never trust a German son. Remember it every moment. Least of all a sentimental German. A German who seems to have gone soft. It's a hard lesson. Learn it. Hey, no. Quickly. What is the lesson, Alex? Never Trust a German. Tonight on Words at War, we've brought you a dramatization of Glenway Westcott's novel, Apartment in Athens. The radio dramatization was written by Phyllis Parker. In the cast, Wendell Holmes played Elianos, Peter Capel.